In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Stencil Toolkit in CAM350 and DFM Stream. The Stencil Designer Toolkit can be accessed under the Design Ribbon. You'll see three different modes here, an automatic mode where we automatically go through all the apertures on a layer and create this proper stencils from those apertures. We have an interactive mode, which is kind of the learning mode, where we'll select a pattern and select what we want to change it to and we'll have the option at that point to save it to the library at the same time. And then we have library management. Uh, you can have multiple stencil libraries based however you want to really. I mean you could have it by customer, by a contract manufacturer, uh, special handling type of layers pretty much up to you how you break down your library, but uh, you can have a library, pull things out of it, add things to it with the library management. So we're going to start off with the interactive mode because that's where most people will start and you can use that mode to build a library for your automatic mode and we'll see how to do that. I'm going to turn on the paste bottom here and I'm going to go into the interactive mode. We're going to use the paste bottom as our source layer. Now, another option that's available to you if you have intelligent data, and by intelligent data I mean ODB++ or IPC2581 would be examples, you can actually use your top or your bottom layer and then select a footprint and create your stencil based off of those footprints. Okay. But we realize that most people are dealing with Gerber and NC, so they don't have footprints, so we're going to be stuck with uh, selecting a graphic pattern. So let's do that. I'm just going to hit select, and um, let's just grab this little pair down here. Say OK to that. Create a stencil for this. And the option I had chosen was offset, so we'll just offset this a little bit. Um, and it doesn't have to be symmetrical. As you can see, you can offset it uh, asymmetrically. But once I've done that, I hit Save to Library to add it to my library here. Or I can hit Create, just create it in this particular design. And there you can see our offset. Let's continue with that thought with uh, some of the rest of these. So let's go back into the interactive mode again. And this time, instead of a offset let's do a change shape so we'll do a select we'll choose this pattern and we will create a stencil from it again this is where we could add whatever we're going to create to our library so once we've figured out what we're going to make and let's just try out the uh, standard home plate shape and again uh, parameters that can be edited um, as far as size and how it looks I can save it to the library at this point, and then I can also create it. And as you can see, it went through and created um, the home plate shape. So let's just finish these last two patterns off, and then we'll talk about some other options. So this time, let's do a resize. And I'm just going to select this BGA. Okay, and then uh, let's make it uh, let's make it about ninety percent, and we'll hit create. And then the last thing is this pattern down here. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And uh, let's see here. Um, let's just try a, a, a different resize here. We'll do a 75 by 90, just so we have differences for all of them there. So there's my stencil creation on my bottom side layer. Now I went through and grabbed each pattern and told the software what it, to change it to. I could have been adding those to the library so that the next design I get 
I might want to just use my library to change all these shapes at one time. So that's where the automatic mode comes into play. So I'm going to go into the automatic mode. If I've created a library locally or for this particular design, it would show there. But generally, you're going to create an external library so that you can reuse it from design to design. Uh, you can browse out if you have multiple ones and pick the one that you want. Once you have chosen your library, you can choose what items you want to use to process on this layer. You don't have to do them all. I am going to do that, though, where I just basically add them all over here. And I could remove some if there were some things I didn't want to do on this particular layer. But again, once I've done that, I've started with my paste mask top layer. I'm going to create a new layer called Stencil 2. From that, I'm going to hit Create, and it's going to use all those shapes there that were in the library to create my new Stencil 2. Okay, I didn't make any huge differences here, but you can kind of see the differences in the layers there. Okay, so this is how you can use both an interactive mode and an automatic mode to create your stencils. And as I mentioned before, we do have a library manager. So uh, if you have multiple external libraries and you want to move things for back and forth between those, you can or add items to it or delete items from a particular library. You can do that with the library manager here. But that is the new stencil toolkit in CAM 350 and DFM Stream 15.0.